Honestly, catch me like watching soap carving videos at night just to relax. 10 days, you don't end up panicking and realizing that you studied the wrong thing and end up crying in a Panera Bread. It's salty enough, you don't need those tears in there. Hey guys! So about a year ago, I posted my How to Study for the DAT Part 1 video where I basically showed you all the different resources that I use um, for all the different subjects of the DAT. I'll put the link for that video down below, but today I'm back to share with you guys Part 2 of that video series, which is how to actually use the resources once you have them, which is something that I honestly wish that more people told us about. On forums and stuff, you can always find people list the different types of resources they use, but then after that, you kind of don't really know what to do with them. Because at the end of the day, let's be honest, you can get all of the fancy stuff, all of the expensive books, expensive prep courses, everything that they tell you to get on Student Doctor Network. But unless you actually know how to use those resources, you might not be getting the most out of them that you can. Because at the end of the day, this exam honestly feels like kind of like an intense you know, sports event where you have to practice for the days leading up to the event. And then you have to make sure that you're right in the right mental space to do it. All right, let's get into it. So step one and step two actually don't have anything to do with the books or anything like that. So step one is just to make a realistic schedule based on how much time you have. And I'm not talking about one of those psychopathic schedules where you study for 21 hours and sleep for three hours. This is a nice little plug for Crack the DAT. They actually have a four week study guide schedule. They have other study guide schedules too, like eight weeks and things like that. But for me personally, when I was studying for the DAT, I like scoured the internet for any sort of five week study guide and there was nothing. So then I basically kind of just had to haphazardly cram everything into five weeks without like a real schedule. Two is figure out what you don't know. This is super important because you have to be able to target things that you're weakest in. Um, in my case, it was everything. But what's great about some of these different study apps like Crack the DAT is that a lot of these guides will have diagnostic tests, so I highly recommend you guys doing them because then you can tell like, okay, you already know you're bad at this subject, but what kind of questions are you bad at? And then where can you start? I'm pretty sure my first gen chem test, I got like a straight 13. So like, don't be upset if you don't do that great on these diagnostic tests. This is literally just to kind of give you a gauge of where you're at. Okay, so now after those two steps, this is time for the actual learning portion, which in my opinion should only be about 30% of your study time. The remaining 70% should be for practice. Here's the thing. So everyone learns differently. So what worked for me might not work for you. And also what worked for you guys in school with lectures and things like that might not work on this exam as well, because this exam is kind of like a, its own type of beast. It's different from anything else that you've ever studied before. And that's just because of the sheer volume of information, um, the standardization of it, and just the amount of time that it takes to prepare for it. Something to be scared of guys, but just be aware that since it is different from all the other exams you've had, that you have to play around with different study methods. So maybe if you always take notes in class, you could try highlighting, flashcards, things like that. We'll say drawing flowcharts has always saved me no matter the exam, no matter the class, but personally that's just me. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, make sure that whatever you're doing when you first pass, your first time learning everything, that you do it so that you can maintain like 50%, at least all of the super important stuff. You're probably thinking, Connie, I can't just get a 50%, I'm trying to be an oral surgeon. Don't worry, future oral surgeon, you're gonna be fine. Hear me out. So realistically, to be honest, you cannot learn everything that they could possibly test you on the DAT. Like, you just can't. So hear me out on this method. This first pass, like I said, you're only gonna learn 50% of the material, whatever it takes to get through as quick as you can, so that way you can review everything as quick as you can. You still wanna retain all the important stuff, of course. Make sure that you can recognize words. Yeah, I've seen that word before. But don't spend too much time taking the perfect notes and trying to memorize everything because this is just the first pass. Now, after you finish that part, that's when you jump straight into questions. You might not feel like you're ready to jump into them, but trust me, you learn so much more from doing practice questions. And when you go on to do those practice questions, that's where you have to apply the 50% of knowledge that you kept, right? So you're like, okay, I know that word. You might feel like you don't know everything, and that's okay. That's because now you're practicing the art of critical thinking. Give it your best guess, kind of use your critical thinking, because that's really important to doing well on the test. Honestly, after all these years of school, I think that's probably the most important skill in taking a test, is being able to critically think and apply what you know and piece it all together to answer a question correctly. Then, once you've taken your practice questions, read the answer keys, and then use that answer key to fill in your remaining gaps. Think about it, because when you're reading a book or taking notes, you're kind of limited to the information and everything that's just in front of you. 
and you're kind of just passively learning. But when you're taking practice tests, you're both applying what you know, but then you're also learning because you're trying to piece together everything else that you don't know. Be warned, so this method works really well. I applied it to my pharmacy school law boards and my pharmacy school clinical boards. I felt like this method of spending 30% of the time learning and more like 70% of the time practicing really helped me. But I have to be prepared to feel very stupid for a very long time. The thing is, you're going to be jumping into practice tests and practice problems before you feel like you've mastered something. And you have to be okay with that. I know that's hard for you guys out there who are used to getting good grades, or used to spending a lot of time studying and preparing for things, but you just have to jump into it because at the end of the day, you're going to get a much better grade from it. It's scary, trust me, but I think it's better to have your ego bruised on a couple practice tests and end up doing really well on the real thing. So up until now, that was kind of all like theoretical stuff. So now I'm gonna actually show you how I learned and practiced everything. So step one, if you're anything like me and just you know forget things the second you take them in your undergrad courses, start from the bottom up and learn from video refresher courses that your different apps and things may have. So for example, here on Crack the DAT, I kind of like that they had videos in all different subjects like Orgo, Gen Chem, Math, literally all the subjects. That was really helpful for me just because I hadn't taken any of those prereqs a long time ago. So this is especially good for any of you non-traditional students or people that you know are removed from the basic sciences for a while. So take the time to go through those video courses. Also, can I just take a second to plug my Canadian friends out there? Um, <clears throat> I'll have a soap carving section. I just find that so amusing. Honestly, catch me like watching soap carving videos at night just to relax. First off, some band-aids. These can be really helpful to you, especially if you cut yourself with the knife. Okay, so once you watch those videos and everything like that, you kind of need to consolidate everything that is super high yield and super important. So personally, I like to make things like um, little cheat sheets of equations I had to know for math, equations I had to know for gen chem, structures I had to know for orgo, and for biology, honestly, it was a crapshoot because everything felt important. But take notes on biology however you want. Their personal plug for Crack the DAT, they have some really good cheat sheets in here. Um, so you guys know how every class has like that one you know, lord and savior that makes like the most beautiful study guides with all the pictures and like nice little bullet points. Yeah, so what I really liked about Crack the DAT is that all of their notes look like it was made from that one note god, which is amazing. Um, and I also really liked the math notes for this because they have really good equations. And in order to do well on math on the DAT, it's all about just memorizing those equations and being able to do those problems really quickly. And so last, what I wanted to show you guys about the organic chemistry section is that I really liked this kind of like molecule reaction spreadsheet, if that's even what you call it. Honestly, I don't even remember what you call it, but this was really important. Now you're ready for the real stuff, which is the part that sucks, which is the remaining 70% of your studying, which is the practice. The question is that once you, you know, watch all the video courses for each little individual subject that you need, and also once you make your own cheat sheet, is to do the subject specific practice test right away. You don't feel like you're ready for that, but trust me, just jump into those subject specific practice questions right away, because like I said earlier, you'll learn a lot more from them. First thing I like about Crack with DAT is that it has this little like video explanation too of what you got wrong, which is really nice because it was super time consuming to have to go back to my notes, figure out why my answer was wrong, and not really be sure if that's why I was wrong. It's 2020, we don't have time for flipping pages, people. And that's kind of the bulk of what you'll be doing. It's learning a subject and then taking the subject-specific practice stuff. And you kind of just do that for all the subjects. Make sure that if you're like me and, um, you know, had a lot of work to do on all of the subjects, that you spread yourself evenly. So that way you're getting a little bit of gen chem each day, plus a little bit of bio, a little bit of orgo. So you're not just learning all one thing at once and then forgetting it by the time you move on to the next thing. So a lot of these DAT study programs also have full length tests. So hey, now listen up. Do not save all 10 full length tests for the last 10 days of studying. A, you'll totally burn out. B, you'll definitely figure out what you need to work on, but you're not gonna really have time to work on it or focus on it because being full length practice tests, trust me, is super exhausting. It takes hours and hours just to take the test, but then you have to go through the answers and why you got them wrong. But honestly, consider full length practice tests as just one full day of study and sprinkle it out starting from like the first week of your study. Like I said before, you're not gonna feel like you're ready the first week to take a full length test. You're probably gonna do really crappy. You're probably gonna cry a little. 
That way you kind of know from the beginning what to gear you're studying for, what is high yield, what shows up all the time. And that way, the last 10 days, you don't end up panicking and realizing that you studied the wrong thing and end up crying in a Panera Bread. It's salty enough, you don't need those tears in there. So something that I also recommend is that as you're going along, look at those saved test results. It's scary because it compares your score to everybody else that's also taking the same exam. But this is super important because that's how the DAT is actually going to be graded. It's compared to everybody else taking the same question. So it's better early on to know where you stand. So that is how you should be using your DAT study resources to study for this exam. Now disclaimer, I personally used DAT Bootcamp when I was studying for the exam back in the day. Um, I didn't really know about Crack the DAT, but I will say what really sets Crack the DAT apart is if you're someone that's going to take longer to study for the exam, or if for whatever reason you need a longer subscription like me, because I wasn't really sure when I was gonna take the exam, here's why. Can I just take a second to vent? Because I don't think you realize how poor you're going to be in dental school until you get here. Are you guys sure you wanna do this? Save as much money as you can before you come to dental school. So this is the one time in the whole video that I'm gonna be salesy for you. What's really great about Crack the DAT is that it's the best bang for your buck out there right now just because it gives you twice the amount of access you get six months for only half the price compared to other programs. So you're saving so much money, it's kind of ridiculous. And at the same time, you're not really compromising the quality because it has amazing practice questions, high yield questions, video courses, notes, things like that. So if you guys end up deciding that you wanna use the same program that I used to show you guys today, the link is down below. They're actually really nice and giving you guys a 10% discount if you use my code, Connie, C-O-N-N-I-E 10. Wow, I'm officially one of those people with their name and a code. My mom is gonna be so proud. So yeah, anyways, I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the link down below and I'll see you guys later.